All right, and now the time y'all have been waiting for. Our official week one picks, baby. Woof, I'm feeling good. A little, little bit of goosebumps because this is our first picks of the season. We want to start, start off with a strong bang, strong money in our pocket. Give y'all the information that y'all need to be successful. I mean, did you watch the game last night, folks? I mean, betting commercial after betting commercial after betting commercial after betting commercial after betting commercial. I'm not the biggest fan of that. Uh, you know, I know gambling can be a little tricky. I get it and not great for some people. I get it. Uh, so I don't love the commercials being slammed down everybody's throats. Um, but, you know, they're trying to make money. I get it. It's unfortunate. Capitalism, a lot of money, blah, blah, blah. Um, but well, uh, we'll give you, you know, since everybody's betting, we might as well throw our hat in the ring and be like, hey, this is what we think. Y'all, you know, we, we're here every day talking through it. We've got knowledge. Y'all know. Uh, so this is our first, first official picks of the season, week one. Um, and this is how we do it here. We do two groups of picks, three picks in each group. Our first group is our locks. This will happen 100%. We are feeling so confident about these. You can bet whatever you want, however much you want, your house, your cars, it doesn't matter because you're going to win. So if you got to sell the house for a couple of days, well, you know, to get the money liquid and cash in hand, um, that's fine. No problem. So we got three picks in our locks, and then we've got a 99% guarantee. Uh, we feel so confident, but there is maybe one thing that is going to ruin the bet, one thing that we think could happen that could potentially ruin the bet, but we still feel so freaking confident in them, 99% guarantees. So let's start with our locks in our first pick in our lock section. This is so disrespectful, folks. I don't know what the hell is going on with Vegas, but this bet, when I saw it, Holy moly, disrespectful as heck. So our first pick in our locks category is the Dolphins plus three and a half points. And this even went up. It was Dolphins plus three when we talked about it. Now it's plus three and a half. I watched it go up a half a point right in front of my eyes. I was like, are y'all crazy? Are y'all crazy? So let's break it down. I mean, are we really going to believe in Mac Jones week one? I've got no problem with you believing men in Mac Jones, but not week one, not week one, especially now with all this Cam Newton drama kind of unfolding, being a little bit of a distraction. I don't put that too much into our official pick, but I do think it's something that Mac Jones is hearing, and he's like, what? <laughs> Y'all, you, you thought I would be uncomfortable? What are you talking about? Why would I be uncomfortable if you were on the team? I was beating your ass in practice. What you talking about? You were the one being uncomfortable because a rookie was in there beating your ass and outperforming you. What are you talking about? Uh, so maybe Mac Jones tries to do a little bit too much to kind of, you know, be like, uh, Cam Newton doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm the real deal. Let me go out and prove it. But the main thing is that this Dolphins defense is no joke, folks. This is a real defense. I mean, Xavier Howard held out, and we ended up paying him. So, you know, he's going to be on his A1 Tier 1 game, you know, trying to, you know, renegotiate his contract next season. He's like, hey, if I do great, I can renegotiate my contract again for the third time and get more money. So, I mean, Brian Flores is going to be throwing everything in the kitchen sink at Mac Jones. You're not going to make a rookie comfortable throwing the ball. And, you know, just say, you know, take the Dolphins offense out of the equation. How many points do you think Mac Jones is going to be able to drop on this Dolphins defense? 10? 17? You think 20 plus? You think Mac Jones could do 20 plus points on this Dolphins defense? I don't know about that. And if you're not putting up 20 points, you're probably not going to win the game. And that goes for every team. If you're not putting up at least 20 points, don't expect to win the game. Now, let's talk about the Dolphins offense. Um, I know everybody is shitting on two in the national media. I don't get it. We never got it. We never even got it last year when they were talking that nonsense. It was Chan Gailey's offense, which was absolutely trash. And it was, you know, um, two was weapons, not bringing in the ball. Two was delivering absolute perfect dimes, deep balls, short balls, whatever it was. It was always dimes. Two's accuracy is not up for debate, folks. I will not have that discussion. His accuracy is one of the best in the league. I, I've got no problem saying that. So, I believe in Tua to move the ball. This Dolphins defense against Mac Jones, I don't know where this – this is a dis – if the, if the Dolphins saw this line, if I'm Brian Flores, if I'm Tua, if I'm the defense, I'm looking at this line and be like, the hell is this? The hell is Vegas thinking? My, uh, plus, uh, plus three and a half. <laughs> what? What? What are you, out of your gourd? That's motivation right there for them. So I just don't believe any in Mac Jones week one. Maybe, you know, week 10, week 13, he's looking good. He had the entire season to get, you know, right under his belt. And he's, you know, progressing every single week. But not week one, especially not against this Dolphins defense. The only good thing this Patriots team has going for them is that they're at home. That is it. 
I'm not buying into it. Watch out for two to actually sling this ball all over the field, not having Chan Gailey, who doesn't even know what he was doing in his prime, and you bring him in when he's freaking older and not even smart anymore. He wasn't even good in his prime, so I don't even don't even bring me back to that last season. I, I don't even understand why we brought him in the, in the first place. But Dolphins plus three and a half, absolutely love it. Um, you know, do they not, they win the game? But if they don't even win the game, they're not losing by more than a field goal. Absolutely, it's a field goal at the end of the game, tie game. Uh, Patriots just had their had the ball last, just like what happened in that Patriots game, or uh, that um, uh, Bucks game last night. Tom Brady has the ball at, at, in his hands at the end of the game. Unfortunate, they lose by two. That's what happens here at maximum. Dolphins plus three and a half. Alrighty, our second pick in our locks category is the 49ers minus eight. I would buy this 49ers team all the way up to minus 27, 50. Minus what? What can we bet this up to? Bend it up. Folks, it's Dan Campbell. Game one. No way. No way. No way. We can go all the way up to 49ers minus 13 and a half. Yeah, I like that. Uh, but we'll play the official spread. Um, let's not get too crazy week one, even though I do like minus 13 and a half. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I, the Lions, folks. What are we talking about with this Lions team? I can't buy Dan Campbell at all. Not week one. I mean, folks, this is week one. If you want to buy Dan Campbell and Mac Jones later, I've got no problem with that. But not week one here, especially against this 49ers team that is so eager to finally be back on track after last season. Everybody getting injured and, unfortunately, not being that great overall because of all the injuries. Now they're healthy. Joe uh, Nick Bosa is healthy. We've got uh, Jimmy Garoppolo healthy and Trey Lance looking good and you know quarterback by committee potentially here uh it's just what are the lions going to do offensively defensively they can't keep up any pace with this 49ers team so i'm swallowing the eight points here i don't care that they're not at home i can't buy dan campbell week one i don't think he has his team ready to rock i believe in kyle shanahan having his team ready to go here week one i've got no problem with that and it's just everything offensively defensively talent wise jared goff now doesn't have the offensive guru of sean McVay, he's got Dan Campbell. That's a big difference, folks. A huge difference. I won't put it into in terms, in words, because I don't want to disrespect Dan Campbell this much today. I've already done it enough. I'm not going to do it anymore. Um, but yeah, it's just this 49ers team is just so much better offensively, defensively, quarterback, coaching, running back, wide receivers, cornerbacks, defensive linemen, it's defensive edge rushers, linebackers. Everything is better clear cut by this 49ers team. I believe Kyle Shanahan gets it done. He goes out there and embarrasses the Lions. This is a dominant performance here. This is a potential dominant performance in the 49ers. We're not able to be dominant last season because of all the hiccups. Now they're hungry. 100% healthy, ready to rock. They're back to domination, especially against this lackluster Lions team. 49ers minus 8. Alrighty, and then our last pick here in our lock section, we're going to go Vikings minus 3. Kirk Cousins, Delvin Cook, no, there's not really that, pre there, there's pressure to succeed because they didn't succeed last season, only having seven wins, but I mean, against this Bengals team, there's struggles with the offensive line, protecting Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow coming off the injury, is he going to be a little bit timid, uh, this Vikings defense bringing in Patrick Peterson, so now the Bengals and Joe Burrow, I mean, you got an elite corner going against you, Jamar Chase hasn't caught a ball, he caught one ball, dropping the ball, doesn't even know what the NFL ball looks like like the man is struggling out here so I just can't buy anything on this Bengals team defensively offensively I don't believe in Joe Burrow heading into the season um you know, we kind of said already that, you know, Joe Burrow is potentially, well, we do think he's going to look kind of the worst of those kind of quarterbacks from last season to uh, Jalen Hurts, Justin Herbert. I really think Joe Burrow at the end of the season is going to just be a little lackluster compared to all those other quarterbacks taken uh, rookie-wise last season. So I can't buy anything in this Bengals team. Mike Zimmer is a little bit on the hot seat. His defense needs to be here this year. He said it was absolutely trash last season. Try to work it up to be a little bit better and uh, just quarterback wise and offensive wise and moving the ball wise the Vikings are just in such a better position than the Bengals all uh, than the Bengals are overall so I'm gonna swallow the three here Vikings on the road they get it done defense steps up and uh, Kirk Cousins looks like good Kirk Cousins not in primetime game with no pressure on him he gets it done Vikings minus three all right, so those are our three picks in our lock section. Dolphins plus three and a half, 49ers minus eight, Vikings minus three. 
Now let's go to our 99% guarantee section. We feel very, very strongly about these, but there is like maybe one thing we can see potentially, maybe possibly happening that ruins the bet. And we'll talk with those through when we make our picks, but here we go. Three picks in our 99% guarantee section. Our first one, and I love this one. I was very, very close to putting this into our lock section, but because of the half a point hook, I'm going to leave it in the 99% guarantees. So the first pick here is the Steelers plus six and a half. What the hell is this disrespectful spread? I mean, if last night told us anything, what are you talking about swallowing all those points when there's two great teams going against each other? The reason why we feel so confident about the 49ers swallowing eight there is because the Lions are not competitive. They're not good. Uh, Cowboys were great. We knew that. Bucks were great. We knew that. And it was a bloodbath. And it was a nine-point spread. And it ended up be a two-point game. So... Uh, Steelers plus six and a half. I absolutely love this one. Um, Steelers at the Bills. I understand it, but I mean, folks, just last night, Cowboys on the road against the Bucks, and they were hanging in there the entire game. They were in the game the entire game. It wasn't like they were getting blown out and came back and had a miracle to come back. They were competitive, went toe to toe with Tom Brady. No big deal. So Steelers here, great defense. Big Ben, did y'all not see what he did in preseason game number two? Didn't play preseason game number one. Played three seasons in preseason game number two uh, and put up two passing touchdowns. Looked great. What are y'all talking about? Then didn't play preseason game number three. You don't think he's going to be ready to rock here? He was ready to rock in preseason game number two without going in preseason game number one. What are y'all talking about? Ben Roethlisberger will be great. And they got Najee Harris. So the running game is going to be great. And the defense is already great. So I, I don't see, I see this being a bloodbath here, a competitive game. Now, the reason why we have it in the 99% guarantees is because of that half a point hook. If it was plus seven, it would have been in our guarantees, but it is plus six and a half. So if the Bills do win by seven points, we lose the bet, unfortunately, and we see them losing potentially losing by seven points, tie game. Josh Allen leads him down, scores a touchdown, leaves like 30 seconds left for Big Ben to kind of tie it up, and he just can't because there's not enough time. That's the only scenario we see the seven being a factor here. But we love the Steelers. They'll compete offensively. They'll compete defensively. Josh Allen fans in the stands. We'll see if he kind of lives up to it. We believe he does, but that is still a narrative, a potential that could happen. Fans in the stands affect the quarterbacks. Josh Allen had a great season last season. We believe he keeps it up, but if there's anything that throws him off the course of being great, it's the fans in the stands not being able to hear, but he's at home, so it's going to help him out. So overall, we believe in Josh Allen. We love Josh Allen, but I mean, the Steelers team is just as, if not better than the Bills are overall totality wise. So I'll take the six and a half here. No problem. All right, the next uh, pick in our 99% guarantees, we're going to go Panthers minus four against the Jets here. All right, Sam Darnold revenge game at home against his former Jets team. Expect him to kind of, you know, ball out a little bit. Uh, Matt Rule, second year, Christian McCaffrey. Panthers never got blown out last season. They got blown out once or twice, and that was by the Bucks both times or once. Um, so um, this, uh, this Panthers team, they keep all the games close with Teddy Bridgewater. I don't believe Sam Darnold is an upgrade over Teddy Bridgewater, but I do believe Matt Rule year two and Christian McCaffrey is an upgrade overall. So I don't think they get blown out. They're at home. Fantastic. Uh, on the Jets side, Zach Wilson, rookie quarterback. Robert Sala, rookie head coach, week one on the road. I don't think it's as buttoned up. So I have faith that this Panthers team can just be game managers, put up the points, not let Zach Wilson put up any points, really anything meaningful, maybe get into field goal position a couple times but not scoring touchdown after touchdown after touchdown we just heard earlier today Jamison Crowder is out for the Jets so once again taking away opportunities and weapons from Zach Wilson exactly especially week one on the road is never a good sign watch out for Christian McCaffrey and Sam Darnold to kind of you know play maybe his best game in his career um you know unfortunately there's nobody left in that Jets team um Robert Sala kind of yeah Robert Sala did kind of get rid of Sam Darnold and go with Zach Wilson so uh, yeah maybe a a little bit of a uh, you know unfor you know a little bit of uh, upsetness there by uh, Zach uh, by Sam Darnold excuse me but uh, yeah we're gonna go Panthers minus four here at home really should have no trouble here Jets aren't anything great especially Week One and uh, Panthers with Sam Darnold and all those weapons they should be able to be good uh, from start to finish all right and then our last pick here of the week. In our 99% guarantee section, we are going to go Raiders plus 
four. All righty. Monday Night Football. Raiders at home. Now the Ravens. Injury after injury after injury after injury. Running backs, no go. They are probably going to be starting a rookie. We'll see if Le'Veon Bell and Latavius Murray can get up to speed to go by Monday night. Regardless, don't expect the Ravens rushing game, which was the best thing about the Ravens last season, to be up to par, up to good standard, needed to win a game. Now, we believe Lamar Jackson can just be a pure passer come Monday and beat the and try to be competitive or beat the Raiders with the elite passing game, but overall, just kind of the overall maybe psyche and the chemistry maybe just a little off on the Ravens because of all these injuries, everybody getting injured, and you know, that just kind of plays psychologically. Am I going to get injured? Am I the next one up? Are we going to be able to kind of weather this injury storm and not have great running backs that we were all, you know, big on and working with and our uh, rhythm and timing were all down pat with these running backs that just got taken away from us and these running backs that we haven't even really uh, been around and hung out with and talked to and just kind of be buddy buddies and friends with and teammates and that brotherhood bond with is just not there yet because they were only here three days before game one is kicking off. So, and then Marcus Peters defensively also out in the blocking tight end also out. Just so many injuries and they're on the road and they have to go to Vegas. The spectacle that is Vegas. And then you go against John Gruden and Derek Carr and that should be elite passing offense or just offense overall with Darren Waller and Josh Jacobs and Hunter Renfro and Henry Ruggs and Derek Carr being an elite passer in this league. I just think it's it's overall a little bit too much for the Ravens to overcome, and I get four points with the home team. How can I not take that? Plus, the Raiders are only good the last two seasons in the beginning of the season. So, I mean, everything is just adding up here. Raiders plus four. If Lamar Jackson goes balls to the wall and just proves, hey, y'all thought I thought I was a running back and y'all thought I needed a run game. Well, I just threw for 700 yards and beat this team by 24 points. What's up now? What, what do y'all got to say? That's the potential. And that's, you know, why it's in our 99% guarantee section. Also, John Gruden, we're not the biggest believers in, uh, could also just flounder this kind of a little bit of a gimme game. Every Everything, uh, everything surrounding this game seems to be like, hey, this is the Raiders to win. And, you know, leave it up to John Gruden for not getting it done. So we'll take the Raiders and those four points at home. That's too many points, folks. If it was like three, maybe we go with the Ravens. If it's like only two and a half, yeah, maybe we go with the Ravens minus two and a half. But we're getting plus four points here. You can't turn that down. Week one, home team with uh, injuries freaking up the wazoo for the Ravens. How can we not take this, folks? We'll live and die by it. Raven or Raiders plus four. So that's our three picks and our 99% guarantees. Steelers plus six and a half. Panthers minus four. Raiders plus four. So our overall picks this week are locks. Dolphins plus three and a half. 49ers minus eight. Vikings minus three. And then our 99% guarantees. Steelers plus six and a half. Panthers minus four. Raiders plus three and a half.